Today I would like to tell you a little bit about some work that Sarah Potsky, Linda Deegan, Jack Finn, Bob Muth, and myself, Martha Mather, did relative to habitat use, behavior, and movements of migratory striped bass during their summer visitation here in Plum Island Sound, Massachusetts. The habitat that we're looking at is the salt marshy part of the estuary. Below you see the size of the striped bass that we would use. These are adult fish, but they're what we're calling teenagers. They're probably not spawning yet, although they could, but they're three to five years old, which corresponds to about the 13 to 16 year old in human lives. Most of us are associated with the University of Massachusetts at Amherst in the Department of Natural Resource Conservation. My employer is USGS. Sarah was a student in the School of Marine Sciences, and we've had great luck working with the Plum Island Long-Term Ecological Research Group. And in this particular project, we asked five questions. First, we asked what movement options are available to these migratory fish. Second, we asked, do these fish that we tag in Plum Island Estuary stay there for the summer? Remember, they're migratory fish. Third, we asked for those fish that stay the whole summer, how are they distributed? Are they together in clubs or groups in hot spots, or are they evenly distributed? Fourth, we asked, is there variation in the behavior of individuals? And, I th and then we also wanted to know if the striped bass that we saw returned to their spawning grounds, that's what we call uh, natal grounds, and how did they do that? These striped bass are not residents here. They are summer visitors, and, and these are fish that spawn in the Hudson River in New York, Delaware Bay and Chesapeake Bay and in the spring they undergo seasonal migrations and we actually see them in the summer when they're in Massachusetts. These fish are actually quite abundant now if you look at the plot there that they went through a bit of a crisis in the 80s but now they are at record high levels and almost 20 percent of the fish that are caught in the summer are caught in New England so we are the destination where these fish come to feed. And you may wonder why we have such a high population of striped bass now and um, in many fish populations they're not at high levels and we're having to work to bring them back. But in the 1980s the striped bass reached a low level and we think that that had to do with water quality in the spawning areas as well as changes in the uh, fish community and particularly to overfishing there was a series of legislative actions that occurred where state and federal managers agreed to work together and it was through those good and very successful management activities that the fish were brought back from the low numbers in the 80s to what they call the recovered numbers in the 90s and so this is like a really good example of how management can really solve problems in the world and, and conserve and save fish. As I had just mentioned, most of the adult fish will spawn in these areas and then some proportion of them will come out of the bays in the spring, go north in the summer, and then back down south in the fall. And it turns out that many of them are feeding off of the Massachusetts coast. And we know this because many of the fish are caught through angling, which is a gear that targets actively feeding fish. So we know that there are a number of these teenage or schooly fish in the estuaries of Massachusetts and we especially know that there's a lot in Plum Island Sound. What we don't know is, is it the same individuals that come and stay all summer or is it a series of different individuals that come, stay a few days and move on? And this has some important implications for fish behavior, fish growth, and fish management. So we set out to test in this study if it was the same individual fish that stayed all summer. And the way we did this was with acoustic telemetry. And in 2005 and 2006, we tagged all together 60 fish. And what we did there was we anesthetized them, cut a little hole in their belly, stuck the tag in there, and then sewed it up. They recovered and we put them in the water. 
is we have a little tiny tag there and you can see the fingers holding that up and that little tag emits a unique number about every 20 40 seconds and when it swims by a receiver which you see pictured on the right that fish will emit a unique signal that will then be recorded and we will know the trajectory of where individual fish go and that's what I'm going to tell you about in the rest of the talk. So there are interesting things that are going on all along the Massachusetts coast and we're only going to look at what's going on in Plum Island Estuary simply because that's where the research facility is and we want to know where those 60 striped bass go within Plum Island Estuary and each one of those little dots you see is kind of like the turnpike uh, gateway there and that's a receiver that will pick up the fish signal so every time a fish will swim by one of those black dots the receiver will record the individual number of the fish. So here is one example of a trajectory of an individual fish and, and what you see here is on the x-axis you see time and on the y-axis you see site numbers. Now these don't correspond exactly to a geographic location but we what we would like to have you see is that the fish stays in certain areas moving back and forth and then will make a long distance move to other locations. So if you start on the left side of the plot you can see that the fish started at the Rowley mouth and then it moved into the Rowley River there at the clam beds, worked those back and forth probably at a current and then made a long distance trajectory down to the spindle which is at the mouth of Plum Island Sound cruised back and forth, was seen at the Yacht Club, then went all the way out to the, the mouth of the Ipswich River, back up to middle ground. So you can see the range that the fish moves, but you can also see that it favors specific locations. So in order for us to think about this question more, we actually grouped those 18 receivers into two large areas and then six smaller reaches within those areas. So the two boxes represent the two larger areas. On the left is the Rowley River and on the right is Plum Island Sound. And you're going to see those identified on the data plots that follow. Within each one of those boxes are three reaches. If we start on the left looking at the Rowley River we would see first the upper Rowley River and then we would see tidal creeks and then we would see the lower Rowley River. If we look at the right hand box we're going to start at the top and see upper Plum Island Sound followed by middle Plum Island Sound and then at the bottom will be lower Plum Island Sound. So the first question that we wanted to ask is what are the movement options that a striped bass has during its summer migration and I want you to keep in mind that the fish is starting at those blue dots and ending at the red dots. So how is it that it moves north along the coast? And we thought of it as a moving sidewalk or a fast food option where one group sticks together as it might as it's going along 495 and it stops briefly at different places along the way to feed just as you might stop at McDonald's as you go along a major highway not intending to stay there. That's what we call the moving sidewalk option. So in the moving sidewalk or McDonald's model, each individual fish is only going to stay in a specific estuary a few days, a few weeks. This contrasts with the estuary specific model or the summer cottage mode of movement in which groups of fish will quickly come up to a specific estuary where they will then stay for the entire summer. And in this case, individuals will be present for a much longer period of time. Is Plum Island Estuary similar to a McDonald's on 495 for the striped bass or is it more like a summer cottage in the north woods of Maine?